On today's program, I'm talking to Pastor Billy Crone about hybrids, super soldiers, and the coming genetic apocalypse. I'm Jimmy Evans. Welcome to The Tipping Point Show. Well, I want to welcome you to today's program. It's a very, very special program. Pastor Billy Crone is the pastor of Sunrise Bible Church in Las Vegas, Nevada. He has authored around 50 books, you were telling me, yeah. on the end times. It's absolutely amazing. He is a very popular speaker around the world at churches and conferences. And he has written this book called Hybrids, Super Soldiers, and the Coming Genetic Apocalypse. Billy, thank you for being with me. Hey, thank you. It's uh, great to be on. Well, I've listened to you a lot, read some of your books, and they really are terrific. And this book, and we were talking about this a little bit earlier, and that is, now this is this is documented, this is a very sensational title, you know, Hybrid Super Soldiers in the Coming Genetic Apocalypse. This is not just you pontificating yeah. in this book. You document, it's an amazing amount of documentation, word, word of, just word for word, yeah. of what people are saying, the experts. Yeah, exactly. And, and you, you naturally have to, of course, with the eclectic title, if you will, like that. Yeah. Uh, people are going to say, man, you, you've got the tinfoil hat on. What are you, wacko now? You're <laughs> falling over the edge. What are you doing? You know, and, and certainly even as a Christian, what are we going to talk about this kind of stuff? Uh, well, we need to. Uh, yeah. And we need to document it. We do because it sounds so over the top sensational. Uh, we need to realize that this is really what's going on. And so it, with the eclectic title, really basically in a nutshell, it's a repeat of the days of Noah, yeah. which is a major mega prophecy sign from Jesus, of course, Matthew 24. Yeah. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it, not maybe, not my, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. So Jesus lays down the gauntlet and says, here's a big sign that I'm getting ready to come back. You're going to see a repeat of the Noah's day. And that's what it's all about. There were three things going on scripturally in the days of Noah. In Matthew 24, Jesus tells us the first one, this lackadaisical attitude in light of the coming judgment of God, eating and drinking and giving to marriage, to me kind of dovetails 2 Peter, where he talks about the scoffing society. Where is right. this coming? That kind of thing. So do, do we see that being repeated today? Absolutely. Mm. Uh, a second point, you go to Genesis 6, that tells us more detail of the days of Noah. And that point would be, it says there, the thoughts of man was continually wicked all the time and it grieved God's heart. And that's part of the reason why he says, that's it, I'm, I'm starting over. I'm hitting a reset button, if you will, on humanity and his creation, Noah and his family and, and the ark. And so you think, okay, do we live in a society where people's uh, hearts and minds are continually wicked? Yeah, you can't escape it, it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. But it's that third one that sometimes in the Genesis 6 account that people, I think, kind of like, uh, skip over real quick. And no, all of it is got to be repeated if it's a sign that Jesus is coming back, the days of Noah. Uh, and that's the third one. And that was the Genesis 6 account. There was some sort of, I use this word, hybridization going on right. with humanity that produced this offspring that's mentioned there, Nephilim, uh, Nephil in the Hebrew, or giants. And so you're going like, okay, wait a second. Is that really going on today? The first two are, but is this third prophecy sign of the days of Noah going? Absolutely, and that's what this is about. There is a hybridization going on of not just humanity, uh, but all of God's creation. I'm yeah. talking plants, insects, animals, and yes, humans, including mixing and matching humans with animals. It sounds crazy, but as you said, we document it thoroughly, it's really going on. But the, but, but the underpinning point is it's a sign Jesus Christ is getting ready to come back, exactly like he said. Well, so the, the giants, the fallen ones, yeah. Nephilim, the fallen ones. So the, an interesting thing about the giants is God hated them. Mm -hmm. And it says that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord, but he was perfect in his generations. Well, he, was, he needed grace because he was an imperfect man, mm -hmm. but his genetics were perfect. Mm -hmm. So when you even look at why God chose Noah and his family, yeah. they had not been infected by the genetic mutation. Right. And probably one of the only families on the earth that, yeah. that had not been. So God was starting over again, but the giant showed up again Yeah. after that. So tell, tell how did that happen? Well, uh, the again, I agree with you. I think it, that helps uh, explain the severity of God's judgment. And uh, that, man, why, why would he wipe out the whole planet, yeah. right? Except for eight people and the animals he specifically brought to the ark. Right. Uh, because everything was being polluted. 
Now, why was that happening? Well, you put yourself in Satan's shoes, right? Genesis 3.15, the great promise from God after the fall of man, right? And, and you know, and, and it says there that uh, the seed of the woman, of course, Jesus, right. would one day crush the head of the serpent. Satan was there. He knew it. He knows exactly that one day somebody from the lineage of the woman the, is going to come and destroy him. So what's he try to do? Pollute all of mankind. And right. he almost made it except for... Possibly very well, eight yeah. people. And so, so of course, God's in charge. He's the one that, that prevented that from happening. Because when he gives a promise, he fulfills it. Right. And uh, so there's that aspect. Uh, repeated again, I think that what we're seeing, and this is what this is all about, proof that that actually is being repeated again. That you're seeing hybridization, again, of not just humanity, but um, with animals and plants and insects, all of God's creation. And isn't that just like Satan? You take... He, what's he do? What, right. What's his modus of operandi every day? This is who he is. This is how evil he is. He takes God's truth and he what? He twists it, contorts it, perverts it. Right. And in this aspect, he's doing it again what he did the first time. He's taken all of God's creation, including humanity. He's twisting, perverting it, contorting it in right. that. But but to me, the first time it was being dealt with, uh, with this uh, demonic hybridization going on, the sons of God, I believe fallen angels, demons were right. combing with women. And it says, and also afterwards, I certainly would believe that uh, the technology, this is, it's being done today with science, but I believe that the technology is obviously coming from a demonic source as well. Yeah. Uh, so you're seeing a repeat today. Well, I was telling you that I, I watched a, a program, a documentary on UFOs. Mm -hmm. Now, UFOs, now this was astronauts uh, reporting the firsthand what they had seen mm -hmm. in the UFOs, uh, military experts, now the the Navy or the Air Force recently came out. Navy actually, I think, a fighter pilot uh, had the footage that absolutely documents the fact that there was a UFO traveling at far greater speeds than mm -hmm. we can travel and stopping in midair and turning in ways that we can't do. Right. And so the technology that's out there, in other words, th this is no longer sci-fi. Right. And this is no longer something that people say you're crazy if you believe it. But in this in this documentary, they were talking about the worldwide phenomenon that's been going on for hundreds of years of the abductions yeah. of the little gray creatures that come and abduct people and they do experiments on their on their reproductive organs yeah and so talk about that just a minute well uh, again it leads us we have another documentary that we shot uh it, with a companion book called ufos the great last days deception and I come out of that. That's actually my background. I came out of, uh, unfortunately, I was involved into Satanism. Uh, I grew up in a non-church atmosphere. And I, when I got interested in, quote, spiritual things, I didn't turn the Christian route because of the hypocrisy that I saw growing right. up, unfortunately. Uh, but I had a roommate that turned me on to Satanism, Anton LaVey. That didn't help. I had a co-worker that introduced me into New Age. If you're familiar with that, it's just mm -hmm. like a cafeteria, take a little bit of this. Hinduism, Buddhism, spiritism, right. shamanism, self-help, secular psychology, all that kind of stuff. And, uh, but basically it's all demonic, right? right? And, uh, but anyway, part of the new age crowd is uh, carte blanche, you're gonna get into the UFO phenomenon. That's just part of that community. Because uh, these things, uh, uh, you know, appear to people who are involved in new age, you get in these altered states of consciousness. And, uh, but when you start taking a look at now being saved as a born again Christian, and I was probably not oppressed, I was probably possessed right. because I was trained to have these things come inside me and speak through me. But you start looking at that with the UFO occupants, right? Their whole premise is that we're this higher evolved race right. coming here to help save humanity. Right. Stop right there. Right. Um, evolution is not true. We didn't come from the goo to the zoo to me and you. So right out of the gates, you lied to me. Now, John chapter eight, what's Jesus say? Satan's only a murderer. He's what? He's a liar and he's a father of all lies. That's right. So these things right out of the gate, they deceive you. And you mentioned how they travel. They can stop on a dime. Uh, we've got uh, reports too that they, they're going 15,000 miles an hour and make a right turn. Well, you'd be road pizza, right? Oh, yeah. uh, if, if that were to happen, if it was a, and that's why secular UFOologists are saying that these things are not so much physical in nature as they are spiritual in nature. Wow. And the secular UFOologists, these are the big guns like Jacques Vallée and some of these other guys, and they're not even Christians. And they're saying uh, basically with decades of research, these things are not coming from outer space, i.e. the end of the universe. They're coming from inner space. They're coming from another dimension. Wow. 
The Bible talks about oh, that, yeah. right? Angels, yeah. including fallen angels, the spirit realm, our realm, they pop in, they pop out, materialize, dematerialize, if you will. That, that's what these things act like. So that's another clue. They're lying to you. The way they travel is a demon. The other one is I mentioned that you're supposed to be this higher evolved technological race, right? right. And apparently the only way I can get this much needed information to help save humanity, because that's how they're pitching themselves as the saviors of the planet, that uh, I have to get into an altered state of consciousness and you have to take over my vocal cords and speak through me. Last time I checked, that's demonic possession. That's demonic. I mean, you'd think if you were really a technological, highly advanced race that you could tap into my cell phone, send me an email, <laughs> uh, give me, beam down a Kirk to Enterprise you know, device. Or, no, you, you have to possess me. Then they go in further. These things not only want to possess you, uh, your vocal cords, they want to come inside you. Yeah. They're called walk-ins and they want to possess people. And they say, what, what is that? And then when you listen to these channeled messages from these supposed space brothers orbiting the planet, here to help us, carte blanche, what they're, they're saying is completely diametrically opposed to the scripture. Right. They, they sit, they come, really, you come all the way across the universe and here's what you tell us. I'm not joking, this is on record. They say that we need to submit to a one world government, a uh, one world ruler, that Jesus has got it all wrong, that yep. we're all Christ's, yep. the new age line, yep. right? There is no such thing as sin, and I'm not joking, I wish I was making this up. They actually come all across the universe, supposedly, to tell us that Lucifer is actually a good guy. There you go. And he's here to freeze. I'm going, come on, what, you know, walks like a duck, quacks like a duck. Yeah. It was like, come on, this is all demonic. I'll give you just a, a couple more. There is, and secular just admit this, there's one way on record that when these critters show up, one way on record to get rid of them every single time, 100% of the time, you know what that is? You command them in the name of Jesus Christ to flee, and they do. <laughs> I interviewed a lady uh, from Oregon who had uh, an uh, attempted uh, abduction occurrence. And um, she said uh, when that happened, it was her and her twin sister. And they showed up. They, she says, and we, I commanded them in the name of I didn't know what to do. I just cried out, Jesus, uh, you know, uh, save us. You know, She said, when I mentioned the name of Jesus, these things not only turned and flee, they ran and were tripping over each other wow. so fast. And there's plenty of accounts of that. Well, wait a second. The last time I checked, who's the only one that can rebuke right. with the authority? The G, you know, it's, it's Jesus, of course. It, and so, but, but the other thing, too, is we call it the, the great last days deception. So why are they doing this? And here's the point, too. Why is the government, after all these years, now finally admitting imminent disclosure? Yeah, okay, we've been holding out on you. These things are real. Why? Because I'm convinced, and this is from, again, my background, because I was in that camp. I'm convinced it's going to be the perfect excuse to explain away the rapture of the Absolutely church. Absolutely, it will. You, you better come up with something, right? Because this yeah. one you can't spin away. CNN can't make up something, right? No, this is a global event, and millions of people disappear, and specifically, only Christians. Boy, you better have some good lie uh, to spin that away, right? Well, think about how slowly, methodically Satan's been at this, because it's all based on the lie of evolution. That's right. So that means he started this last day's lie to explain away the rapture 150 years ago with Charles Darwin. Yeah. Let that permeate the planet. Now with the help of Hollywood, you even have movies that are helping people visualize <sighs> people getting sucked up by UFOs, and that's what happened to those people. And, and then you get some religious ruler on the planet, you know, qualming people's fears in the global broadcast after the rapture. Hey, just want to let you know that, yeah, as you mentioned, the government's been telling you this is true, but here's what's happened. Unfortunately, yes, your loved ones disappeared, uh, but it's okay. It's from the Space Brothers, and these people were not of the spiritual vibrations exactly. for the rest of exactly. us. And they'll actually spin it, not only yeah. explain away the rapture just like that, but they will spin it for those who are left behind, that Jesus said, now you're in the seven-year tribulation, the worst time in the history of mankind. The demons will spin it and say, you're a chosen one. <laughs> the age of utopia. And that's how the seven-year tribulation starts, on the rise of the Antichrist and his false peace. Well, it's if, nuts. If you had a rapture, in an instant, you know, in an instant, hundreds of millions of people disappear, and a UFO appeared. You had UFOs around the mm -hmm. world appear. Yeah. Okay, and just sit there, which would get more attention. Yeah, exactly. The, Im immediately the UFOs. And just like you said, all of a sudden they explained it away. Now, Tom Horn, I don't know if you know Tom, he's mm -hmm. a wonderful guy, friend of ours. And uh, his sister had abduction experiences until she got saved. Yeah. And according to Tom, no saved person has ever had an abduction experience. Right. Because they don't come to people who are saved. It goes back to what you were saying. Right, exactly. About the authority. But the, the Antichrist, and we can talk about this for just a minute, but there, Revelation 13 talks about the false prophet and how he calls down fire from heaven mm -hmm. 
does miracles in the presence of the Antichrist. Uh, the image that is set up, the abomination of desolation, the image that's set up in the temple actually speaks and moves. Do you think that that is, uh, goes back to the issue of the hybridization, possibly the Antichrist being one of the beings that comes, a uh, hybrid? Do you believe that's possible? Well, uh, certainly, uh, I believe the hybridization is part of the Antichrist lie. I'm not going to say, thus saith the Lord, but you look at a lot of this technology, um, but uh, the whole goal is by these people called transhumanists. Right. And what they're pitching is a counterfeit to what God offers through Jesus Christ. And again, that's just like that's Satan, right. right? That's right. So, so what does God offer? That uh, if you receive Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, then you get to live in a place beyond your wildest dreams called heaven. Uh, you get to have uh, a perfect body, a new resurrected body. You get to be a part of a paradise on earth, the millennial kingdom. Uh, you get to be a part of existence forever and ever, uh, the new heavens and the new earth at the end, the eternal state. Um, no more death, no more crying, no more pain. Well, that's what they're pitching through science and technology. Sure. If you would just listen to us, and I believe that that's going to be part of the Antichrist false utopia, not just making peace in the Middle East with Israel, which starts the seven-year tribulation, Daniel 9, 27. But that's part of his, why do we need to follow this guy? Why do we need to worship this guy? And certainly, why do we need to take a mark in the right hand and the forehead? Now, that mark aspect, um, uh, you know, I'm not saying that's the Lord. Revelation 13 says it controls the buying and selling. Well, that's, but some people are saying with the same technology that if you can get this stuff inside of people, you know, mark people from the inside, that maybe that's also part of his lie is that basically you not only will get to buy and sell, but maybe this is part of that false utopia. You'll get upgraded, yeah, upgraded. right, mm -hmm. uh, with this technology. And again, I can't say thus saith the Lord because the scripture doesn't say that, but you understand the technology, it makes you wonder if that's not part of the. The delusion. But that's what they say. They, they want to give the planet what's called the three supers. And the three supers is super longevity, uh, super health, and super intelligence. And they're talking about genetically modifying the human race. Again, a repeat of the days of Noah, hybridization. Because, yeah. uh, in fact, in this, we actually interview uh, an actual geneticist. And I asked her the proverbial question. I says, how much can you modify a human genetically? And technically, they're no longer human. You know what she said? Scientifically, 1%. Really? Sounds wild. She's like, whoa, I was hoping a little bit more room. <laughs> and she says, no, genetically 1%. And, and that was her answer. So, um, but that's what these guys want to do. They, they, and in fact, their words is, and this is in print, post-human. They want to create a post-human society. Oh, yeah. Or human 2.0. And, and they want to upgrade you with this technology. Uh, but they're talking on intelligence on the order of 1,000 IQ. Right? Wow. Now, one, 140 is typically and right. above is a genius. They want to do a thousand super health, right? That you let us and we'll get this inside you and we'll genetically alter you and, and make you super health. And then, of course, super uh, longevity, you'll get to live forever. It's all the counterfeit that you could have for free in Christ without being genetically altered. Well, and the, the moral, the problem with Jesus to a person like you're talking about is are the moral constraints. Mm -hmm. You have to give, forgive, submit, change your behavior, you know, all those, be accountable, all those kinds of things. They don't want that. So just give me, tell me the price tag and I'll pay for it. Yeah. Get, you know, give me eternal life. But you know, you talk about Ray Kurzweil in your book and he is, he is the chief engineer for Google. Billions and billions and billions of dollars to spend. And he says by 2030 that humans will be hybrids. Mm -hmm. And so beginning to uh, to augment, now going back to Elon Musk, Elon Musk has Neuralink, mm -hmm. and this is he's done this with monkeys. Uh, he's experimented with humans. He put it in his own brain. But so this Neuralink, they're able then to upload, they basically link your brain to the cloud. Mm -hmm. And what he's saying is, if we don't do this, we, and we're going to do a program on AI, yeah. but if we don't augment ourselves mentally, we won't be able to keep up with AI. Yeah. They're also saying, and this is what Ray Kurzweil says, if you don't become a hybrid, and I'm talking about putting technology into your body, uh, whether it's enhancing your DNA, uh, you're, we're going to talk CRISPR here in just a minute, yeah. enhancing your DNA, uh, augmenting your brain, augmenting different areas of your, uh, of your body, not only will you be subhuman, mm -hmm. but your children will be subhuman and they won't be able to educate them. Yeah. Your child shows up for school and they say, are you linked up? And they say, no. And they say, we can't educate you. Right. Because these kids over here are able to absorb knowledge at an incredible 
pace, mm-hmm. and you're you know you're Neanderthal mm-hmm. compared to that. Oh yeah. Well, and, and again, uh, Elon Musk. You mentioned him. We have him on tape where he talks about uh, the genetic uh, altering of humanity, including with the mRNA technology. And we got him on tape simplifying it for the audience. And I, I love this clip. It was, I can't, can't believe I came across it. But he simply said the mRNA technology is man's uh, building a computer code that is then injected into you to alter your computer code. Wow. Right? A lot of people say with that technology, oh, it doesn't alter you. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. And, and he said on that tape, he says, and with such technology, mRNA technology, that we could not only reverse aging, which is one of their planks to live right. forever. We don't need God. Right. We don't need Jesus, that whole rebellious right. transhumanist lie. Uh, but he says we could change you into a blank butterfly even if we wanted to. Wow. This is on tape, yeah. right? Uh, what they want to admit. But this is this is their dream. And you're right that uh, I think this is part of the last day's false utopia that's going to culminate in the seven-year tribulation under the Antichrist. And think about the millennial age, not to pick on them, but the millennial age on down. It's the me culture, me, myself, and I, the unholy trinity. It's all about me. It's all about uh, upgrades. It's all about convenience, yeah. which Paul talked about, that people will be lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, how are people going to fall for this? Well, it's all about convenience. It's all about me and, and lovers of self rather than lovers of God, and which we were warned about in the scripture. But think of the average person. Might You get an upgrade on your phone. Everybody wants that. Upgrade on your computer. Everybody wants that. Upgrade on your car. Everybody wants How about upgrade humanity? You bet. And, and, and they're going to love this stuff. And so, of course, I just got to worship you and take a mark. Yeah. You know, who wouldn't want to do this? You could see the setup and you could see the society that's ready for it. Oh, absolutely ready for it. Well, I'm 68 years old. And so, you know, there's a Psalm 90 says the days of man's life for 70 years or by reason of strength, 80 years. I don't like that scripture, by the way. But, you know, so I look forward to eternal life. <clears throat> yeah. You know, I mean, as I get older, I'm going to check out one of these days. I'm waiting for the rapture. You yeah. know, I hope for the rapture. But if the rapture doesn't happen, and one day, you know, I go to be with the Lord. Phenomenal. You know, I'm looking forward to eternity for all of the promises that you talked about. Yeah. However, if I were not a believer, it would be very attractive to come to me and say, hey, you want to, you know, upgrade your uh, DNA and become 40 again yeah. or something? You bet. 